All right, let's take a look at the Thrive Apprentice school homepage template. Basically, that's the page that shows all of your courses inside of Thrive Apprentice, and there's a template that goes along with that inside of the Thrive Apprentice design editor that allows us to make some edits. In my last video, I showed you how you can take the lesson page and make that look like Kajabi. Well, as part of this video, I'm going to show you actually a really easy template to use to make Thrive Apprentice's school homepage look like Kajabi, but that's not really the purpose of the video. The purpose is to expose you to the editor and to show you some of the things that you can do, some additional tweaks you can make to the school homepage to make it your own, and hopefully to help you learn and get more comfortable with the editing of this template and the process that's involved. So let's dive on in and check it out get started, we want to go to the design tab inside of the Thrive Apprentice menu. And I call this the inset menu. I don't know why I do, but inside of WordPress admin here, you have your admin bar on the left. And then inset from that, we have the Thrive Apprentice uh, navigation with all the options and settings. The tab that we want today is the design tab. And when you click on the design tab, this is what you should see. And then we're going to click on edit design and we're going to click on manage templates. And now here are all of our templates. And what we're going to work on today is the school homepage. You may already have a default school homepage. In fact, you will have a default school homepage. That's just how it works. You can see mine is right here, but we're going to click add new. This way we don't mess up anything that you currently have. And you can always set whatever we make today as your default template if you like it. So we're going to click on add new and we're going to give our template a name. I'll call mine demo school homepage and choose content type. We're not doing a lesson template, we're doing a school homepage. And that's just what Thrive calls this page. So that's the template we're choosing. We could start from scratch and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, in my previous video, the one about making Thrive Apprentice look like Kajabi, we did choose this option. However, we can choose a template instead. And when you click on choose template, you're going to see some starting points. This is actually what I would recommend you choose if you're still getting familiar with the editor because they've already given you a great starting point. Now, if you want something that's already kind of configured to look like Kajabi, again, not the purpose of this video, but I know a lot of you have been asking me about it. I would choose school homepage three. And that's the one we're going to choose for this video because it's just, it's pretty clean and I'm gonna show you how we can make some cool tweaks. So choose school homepage three and click create template. And now you'll see your newly added template here. Here's ours, demo school homepage. Let's go ahead and click edit. Okay, and by default, this is what mine looks like. I have my courses in here already. These are courses that I have on my website. Things like Thrive Apprentice to Master, which is all about Thrive Apprentice and, and so on and so forth. Now, if you don't have any courses, there may or may not be anything here, depending on if you have placeholder content. If you have nothing here, I recommend you just create a couple of courses with some placeholder images and lessons just to give you something to work with. Now, because we chose, what was it, homepage number three, we have a layout like this with our featured image on the left and our lesson information on the right. We're not going to make a whole lot of design tweaks to the course list element. Now, what I mean by that is if I click here on my courses, this is something called the course list element. And the course list element is basically think of it like a post list filter. If I click on it on the left hand side, I can edit the design of the things inside of it by clicking on edit design and then click done when I'm done. Or I can click on filter courses and now I can filter the courses shown on the school homepage based on quite a bit of criteria, whether I've set different types of access restriction levels, difficulty levels, or if I just want to sort this by whether or not they have access to it. In other words, if they've purchased it or gotten it for free as a lead magnet, or if they're in progress, etc. Now take a step back and consider that this is your school homepage. This is the homepage for your entire school. So in most cases, for most people, I would recommend you just show everything. I'm a fan of showing people what they have and what they don't have in order for them to click on it, find out they don't have it, and go to your sales page. By default, this looks pretty good, but if we wanted it to look, I don't know, maybe a little bit more like Kajabi, if we wanted to make tweaks to it, if I jump over real quick, this is what Amy Porterfields looks like. If you have her courses and her course library, your stuff appears here. You can see hers looks very, very similar. The only differences would be the subtle gray background and a button on the right. Let's make a couple of tweaks to this page to get you started and to kind of make it a little closer to what we see here. Again, let's start with the course list. We're going to click on it and then click edit design. Now we already have a button placed here within the right hand column of our two column layout. So why reinvent the wheel? Let's just take that button and drag it off to the right and we can drag it anywhere where we see it says right and then just let go. And by default, that's going to make a third column. 
Now we can easily just take that column and drag it and shrink it to the size that we want for our button. And I don't know if you picked up on that, but when I dragged one of the buttons over to the right, it adjusted it for all of them, which is pretty cool. You're, you're pretty much making what are called linked changes. Now I wanna take this column here on the left and I wanna shrink this down to something smaller. By default, they kind of give you your images inside of a content box. You can see that by hovering over it and looking in the left-hand corner. When Thrive by default gives you these templates with an image in a content box, they're doing it as a background image. And you can see that on the left. In fact, if I scroll down in the left sidebar and I go to background style, you can see that they've applied, actually they've put a solid color over it. That's just part of the design. I could delete that and you can see it almost acted like a filter. So I'm deleting that and by default, I have my image for my course, my featured image, filling the background of the content box, which is why when I take this column and I drag it and expand it, I can expand it to the point where the image gets cut off. That's because the content box is no longer in the same aspect ratio as my image. So it's going to stretch to keep filling that box, even if it means it's stretching beyond the scope of the image boundaries. So if you wanna keep your image as a background style, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with just leaving it the way it is, but drag your column until it looks good to you. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine right there. By default, they've included these little icons to show the type of lesson. In Thrive, you have like video lessons, text lessons, audio lessons, and then combinations of different type. I typically don't use those. I don't really like to set those. So I just wanna delete this and get this icon off of my content box just to make it look cleaner and just to show the images that I've uploaded. All right, we're looking pretty good. I know that over in Amy Porterfield's Kajabi, for example, the view course button here is kind of top aligned, which actually matches what we have in ours, but I might want to center align mine. That's pretty easy to do. You can click in the column on the left-hand side, make sure you're under main options, and then under vertical position, just choose the one that centers it. And there we go, our buttons get centered. Now you'll also notice that some of our buttons say different things. For example, this one says continue and this one says begin. That's because inside of Thrive Apprentice, you have the ability to set different labels based on the progress status of your students. For example, if they've started it, finished it, or not started and they're in the middle. But regardless of what my button says, I think it looks bad when it's just kind of short like this. So I wanna click on the buttons and I wanna change them to full width, which means they're going to take up the full space allotted for them inside of the column that already looks better regardless of what the button says. Now the last little tweak that I want to make is I don't like the style of this particular button. I don't like that it's a ghost button. So instead I want to go to my particular button, go to this type here, currently says icon 10 on mine, and I just want to change it to this default style button. And by default, uh, Thrive includes several different button options. You can find one that you like, click on it and it'll automatically change it for you. So once you find a button that you like, you can click apply. Now that still looks like a pretty thick button to me. So I'm going to go to layout and position and I'm going to reduce some of this padding, right? Padding is what's on the inside. Think of it like a stuffed animal or a blanket with padding on the inside. We're going to change this to a smaller number. I think I might change it to something like, I think six is a little small. Let's change it to eight. That looks pretty good. And then maybe we don't need 15. Maybe we can just change this down to like 10 or so. The last thing you can do, I don't think this button color particularly matches my brand. So maybe I want to go to the background style and change the color of the button, maybe to Convology Blue and then click apply. There we go. The button looks how I would like it to look. And I'm gonna make a couple more tweaks here. I wanna get rid of this in progress and then I wanna get rid of the number of lessons and the difficulty. So I'll click in here and in my breadcrumbs go to columns and then just delete those. Now by doing that, however, I've kind of top aligned all of my text. So I'm going to click into one of my columns, again, go to main options, and just like we did with our buttons, we're going to center align it. Okay, I think this is a good place to click the done button, and now we can kind of see our design here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, however, I wanna make a change. I want to turn the background like a darker gray color, and I want to add a white highlight or a white fill inside of these boxes. So we need to go to the main background section of this page. To do that, we're going to make sure in our breadcrumbs, we are at the root or the first breadcrumb. You can get there, for example, by clicking on any element on your page and then clicking on the first one. Ours is called Demo School Homepage, so we'll go to Demo School Homepage Settings in the breadcrumbs. Clicking on that, I can go to Background Style, add a background color here by clicking on this No Color Indicator, and then I'm going to fill it with my 
light gray color that I use for my brand. Mine is a slightly blue color called White Lilac. It's a color that I've saved. I'll just click on that and click Apply. And we've already thrown off some of our design, but don't worry, we're gonna go in here and fix a lot of this in a second. First, let's click on our course list again. Go to course list options, click Edit Design. And let's click into a course item. So again, we clicked anywhere on the course itself and the breadcrumbs, we want to go to the course item. Then go to background style, click where there's no color, and then just create a white fill in the background and click apply. Looking pretty good, but if you can notice here, our button bleeds against the edge and we kind of have everything sort of, it just looks like it needs more padding. So we've already center aligned our button and our text. Let's also just make sure that in the column where we have our content box, we've also center aligned it. I like that. And instead of going to each individual element, if you wanted to do all of them center aligned at the same time, go to columns rather than the column and just make sure that you press the vertical position button. You still need to add more padding inside of the course item. So click again anywhere in a course and go to course item, layout and position on the left and this particular design has 10 pixels of padding on the bottom. So we're going to click this padlock and click on one of these zeros and type in 20. That's going to give us 20 pixels of padding all around the inside of our course item. And you can quickly see that that actually made this look a ton better. If you look at the edges or the corners of our course items, they come to this sharp right angle. That's just by default, no rounded border. If you want that to be just a little softer, I recommend you go to borders and corners and then where you can see these rounded corner looking shapes here, up that to something like five. It's just a soft, very subtle rounding. And I think it makes a big difference. And then click done. Now we're still left with this kind of mess up here. We have our, our course search and our course uh, filter dropdown. I don't really use these on my site, but if we wanna keep these, we do need to make one change. If we click on, for example, anything here like this column, we can see our breadcrumbs. We can see we, in our breadcrumbs, we have a set of columns here. And if we go to layout and position, you can see that by default, this particular design from Thrive has a negative 20 margin to make it overlap with our top section. Let's go ahead and leave that alone for just a second because I want to come back to this top section and make a change. If I go into my top section and I click on background style, you can see once again, we have this solid color overlaying an image. I'm going to delete that solid color, which exposes what default image Thrive added for this template. I'm going to get rid of that as well. Now you can click on the image icon here and you can add an image from your WordPress library. It's totally fine. I'm just going to leave mine a dark color. I'm going to make it my dark brand color and click apply. Now you can't see the typography because it's by default the same color as my dark brand color. So I'm going to find the typography inside of this section and change it just to white. There we go. So with that change, we can now kind of see a little bit more what we want to do with our section here with our filter. Now, because we added this grayish blue background, what I want to do is maybe have it apply here. I kind of like what they were going for. It's almost like it's cutting out. And if you remember, the background used to be white. So I'm going to click into this content box and I'm going to go to background style and I'm going to change it to match the brand gray slash blue gray that I applied to the background. And now my filters look like they are cut out into the top section. So by default, that looks great. Now by the very nature of this page, let's talk about that for a second. This is the school homepage for Thrive Apprentice. By default, it shows only the course list element. And the course list element by its very nature can only show courses. But Thrive Apprentice, as of Thrive Apprentice 4.0, evolved beyond just courses. Thrive Apprentice 4.0 is now a digital product platform. It's a membership platform, in addition to being a course platform. So if you want to add digital products that aren't based off of courses or off of particular posts or pages, what you need to do is add those in manually. And that's actually really easy to do. So let's say I wanted to add something about my cohort. It's a live course that I'm going to be selling. On the right hand side, let's open up the element tray and let's do a search. You can just start typing for content box and let's drag that content box in here above my course list. Or I could drag it right below my columns for the search and the dropdown. I'm going to give this background section the same treatment that I gave my course list elements. I'm going to go to background style, change that to white, click apply and go to borders and corners change that to the same five pixel rounding. 
And then inside of that, I'm going to drag in a set of columns here and change that to a two column layout. And I'm going to drag in and add an image into the left hand column. And I'm going to add the image for my live cohort. And it looks a little big, so I'm going to shrink that under main options, shrink it down to something a little more in line with what might look good, maybe 360 pixels. And then I'm going to take this column and I'm going to drag it until it gets close enough to the image where it looks good. I like that. And then I'm going to add in some text here. And on my columns, I'm going to click on those and breadcrumbs make sure I'm under columns and I'm center aligning everything. Now I want to include a button. So I'm going to open up my element tray. I'm going to go to button or just start typing in button. And then I'm going to drag it in here below my text. I'm going to change this to join the waiting list. And I'm going to do that because my cohort is not yet available and I want people to join my email list. I also want to add an emoji to this. You can find some pretty neat icons on sites like Emojipedia or something like that. Find an icon that looks good. You can add it in. I, I tend to like the emoji icons maybe a little bit better than the default icons just because they have a little bit more character to them. And I think that looks pretty good. So then I'll click on my button and I want to left align it. So under main options, we'll just left align. And that looks pretty good. So I can make tweaks to that button, link it off to ConvertBox and into my email list and active campaign and all of that. Now let's talk for a second about what we just created here. This is more of a promotional implementation of additional content onto the school homepage. If you have digital products, you could have also included those on this page instead. So for example, if you have a digital product that people get access to just a page on your website, you could have put that on here and linked to it. And because it's a digital product that people have to have access to the product before they can access, if someone from the public who didn't have access to it clicked on it, they would see your access restriction rules. This could have also been a link off to a community, something built in Circle or on Facebook. You can essentially link to or add any content here that you want. Just remember, this is not dynamic, it was manually added. But there's really nothing wrong with that, and I really encourage and support you to come into this template and to tweak this periodically, whether you have additional promotional materials or if something inside of your digital products or your membership changes. In fact, you can do some really neat things with this section. For example, I could click on this content box and on the left hand side, scroll down to conditional display and I could use conditional display to swap this out where maybe somebody already had access to the tech stack live cohort. Instead, what I could do is swap it out to show something else. And on my YouTube channel, I have all sorts of different videos about how you can use conditional display and how to implement that. So if you want to learn more about conditional display, definitely check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. I hope that this look at the Thrive Apprentice School homepage and taking one of their starting templates and just starting to tweak it just a little bit shows you what's possible with Thrive Apprentice and what you can do with this platform to completely customize it. Again, we did very little changes. We changed some colors, some shapes. We changed alignments and little tweaks. We made it our own. You can take this completely in any direction you want. You can make it look exactly like Kajabi or you could make it look completely like your own. The point of this tutorial is to show you how easy it is to just jump in and start making changes, as well as how you can take a default school homepage that just has courses on it and expand it to be something more. If this tutorial was helpful to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'm making regular tutorials about Thrive Suite and Thrive Apprentice and this type of tech stack all the time. And if there's a tutorial you'd like to see, by all means, please leave a comment and let me know. That's all I have for you today in this video. I'm Doug from Convology, and I'll see you in the next one.